Okay, so I get myself a box. I'm gonna give it the dimensions. Uh, two, 11, 15. Oh, I'm sorry, two, 15, 11. So we have ourselves our box here, right? So now let's split this box down into our 2D representation. So let's go over here to UV editing. Okay, great, right? So I have my cube and we have this over here. Um, and this is uh, our UV view. So of course we have our outliner 3D and we have our UD view. So this is how boxes are um, brought. This is like a default UV. So anytime you create a cube, it's always gonna look like this, no matter what. Now, what is this, right? These are uh, UVs. So if I right click and I go to UV right here, it has these little points, right? And um, I can take these points and I can manipulate and move these points. But what I really wanna do is I wanna lay this down the right way. So the, there's a couple ways to manipulate these points. I can go to edge, I can grab edges. I can move, but you see two edges move at the same time. And why is that? Because if I click on this edge right here, this edge is connected to another face. Now let's look at this like this. If I go to faces and I click on this, this is this bottom face, but it's this bottom face. It doesn't, it's, uh, it's basically um, spread out over this grid where you can see these faces but they're not, they're laid out incorrectly. So this face right here is this face, but also this face is right here and it's the same size, which isn't true because you know this face is obviously bigger. So let's see what's going on. If I go over here and I click on this right here, it says checker map, let's click on this. And we kind of can see what's going on a little bit more, right? And uh, what's happening is, is uh, it's showing that this face is bigger than this. What's that? No, you know what it's showing? It's showing uh, the UV grid. So let's see that. If I click on this right here, these squares right here are uniform, right? And um, this is not uniform because this face is laid out incorrectly. And also I want you to show you something else. You see this right here where it says zero, zero? This right here is this face, but it's squished down right well it's laid out it's stretched out actually that's why it's looking like that it doesn't look correct so what we're going to do is we're going to uv this with automatic uv right so i'm going to turn off this so i can see these faces and also something else with, with, with these faces if i move this it moves on the uv grid right because what it's looking for is this image this is basically like a picture right here or it's not an actual picture, but it's supposed to represent what a picture would look like. So these numbers look normal, the letters look normal, and the squares are normal on this, but they're un not normal on this. So let's do a, uh, let's lay out these pieces. So I'm just gonna select my object. I'm gonna put it in object mode, click it. And then I'm gonna go over here to UV and I'm gonna click on automatic. Now look at what happened. It split down these faces. What it did is it looks at, these right here are like cameras, they're like projections. So what this is doing is an automatic, it looks at it from all six different ways, right? So it's basically looking at the object, looking at it from this side and it's saying, hey, let me take this face and then put it over here, all right? On this way, it's saying, oh, let me snatch this face and put it over here. So it's taking whatever it sees in this view, and in this view, in this view, in the top and the bottom, and then it's putting those pieces over here. Now, right now, it laid it out perfectly. If I go to this, we can see like that um, this face right here, look at what's happening. This says one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, right? It's the same exact thing over here as it was over here. But if I take this face right here and I press R to scale, and then I go like this, now I'm warping it, even though it's the same face. But this is what happened in the beginning when it was laid out. Because usually the UVs, the default UVs are pretty whack, right? And let me note, I mean, show you something else. This face is right here, you know, 
and it's mapped out perfectly because the squares are all uniform. When the squares are stretched like this, it's wrong. The squares are like that, it's wrong. So you always want the squares to be uniform and then you usually want them all to be the same size for the most part. There's times where you, where you don't, but for this, you want them to be the same size. And something else to note, if I press W and I move this, look at what happens. All right, so it's moving on the grid. And we can see kind of like how it's laid out. Now, another reason for this picture right here is because you see these numbers and these letters, they look, they look great, right? They look normal. But if it's like this, mm -mm, not looking normal anymore. And the main thing you can tell is these don't look normal, but it's the squares, right? It's the checkers. You always want them to be uniform. So this is great right here. This laid out those pieces like amazingly perfect. So what we need to do now is take this into another program like Photoshop and um, make sure that these pieces are, uh, I mean, and lay down our texture. And before I do that, there's something else to note. This is an automatic UV, so everything's gonna be within this grid. But if something was to step out outside of this, look at what happens. This thing lights up, but that's wrong. You always want everything to be inside of this square, right? So if you look at this, you can see the cross, you can see which one it is. It's this one right here. Not this one under here, not this one, not this one. You want everything to be in this one. And, it, and basically the program will let you know if you turn on the picture, on the view uh, display image, and if you move it out, even the slightest little bit, if it lights up, it's wrong. So everything needs to be contained inside of here. All right, so let's take the UVs into Photoshop. So let's uh, select our object. And then we're going to go to, there's two ways to do this. You can click on this camera and then you go to this right here and it gives you like a, um, an area to save your uh, UVs. So I can do, I can do it from this menu or I can go to um, image and then UV snapshot. Cause this, you see the icon UV snapshot, it's the same thing, all right? So UV snapshot, I like to go right here and um, let me give it a location. So I'm put it on my desktop and This folder right here, and I'll name it um, CER Fill Box UV. Sometimes I'll put like to Photoshop, maybe. But I'll just put Serial Box UV, right? Underscore, right? You want it to be a Targa, and you want it to say 2048 by 2048. That's what you want. All right, so this is our location, remember, right? Apply and close. Nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that in my folder. So I'm gonna go to, uh, where is it at? All right, so here's my cereal box UV, all right? Now I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go open with and then Adobe Photoshop. And let me ask you something. Can y'all hear music? Nah. Mm -hmm. We supposed to? No, I just didn't know. I got like a little external program with some like focus music playing. I just didn't know if it was like showing up. I heard I heard some earlier. I'm not gonna lie. Wait, wait, can you hear this? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was a volume. I don't know if I get a copyright strike. Yeah, I think I would. Um, so go over here and uh, I will click on. Oh yeah, so we have this right here. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go to duplicate layer. Then I go to okay. And then we can hide this. Um, 
actually that might not even be necessary <laughs> so I'll, I'll just keep this right here then maybe that was a necessary step now this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring in my uh my photo right that i saved so let me find it real quick oh i thought i saved that uh the cereal box maybe i didn't well i'll do it again I swear I did. Um, wait, give me a second. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, my bad. Uh, yeah. Saved it and then um, I didn't deal with it right away. I did some other stuff. Okay, here it is. So I have it. It's in another folder. So I'll just take this image and um, I'll take it and I'll drag it onto this right here. Boom, right? It's here. Now, if I want to uniformly scale this, all I do is just click this, move it. If I don't want it uniform scale, I hold down shift and now I can like warp it in all types of weird ways. Usually you don't want to warp things. Sometimes you have to though. So I have this right here and uh, yeah, let's chop up this image. So I brought it in, uh, scale it up a little bit. I'll double click it to seal the deal. Now this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna chop it. So I'm gonna go here and get this rectangular marquee tool um, and if I hold down alt and I scroll my middle mouse wheel, I can zoom in. So I'll just take this and, um, and I'm just I'm using my mouse. I'm just, because wherever you pull your mouse and use the wheel, it'll like scroll to that area. And I'll just left click and I'll take this face right here. And then I'll right click and I'll do layer via copy. And then I'll hide the original cereal box one. Now I just have this, right? Holding down Alt, scrolling. Now I can go get my move, wait, make sure I'm saying the right name, move tool. And I'll take this and I'll put it right here. And I'm going to place this image in this on top of this UV. So I'm just going to grab these points and I'm going to scale it as much as I can, right? I guess if I really wanted to, I could like, make it a little bit bigger. It just doesn't matter. And it just, you just need to cover this area. So this might be one of those places I might need to like uniformly scale. It might look weird, might not. We'll just see what happens. So I'll just click it, stretch it to the left, hold down shift to the right. And I double click. Eh, it don't look that bad to me. It was a little stretched, but it's cool. So now I'm going to go back to this, which is my original. I can even hide this. I can even name it if I really want to, but I'll just hide this. And now I will, let's say I want to get the side of this. So I'll just grab this selection right here, select it. If you look at this image right here, it's already kind of got the square. So it's almost like somebody already did this. And I'm going to do the same thing. If I, I have, but first, right now it's on the front layer. It has to be on the main layer with the main picture you're cutting from. That's the key. Right click, layer via copy, hide the original, see the new cut via copy. And now I put it over here on the side, holding that alt, scrolling in. What is it? Control? What's the pan on this? Uh, alt. Maybe there's, eh, anyway. I think there's a pan. I just don't remember the shortcut is. So I'm just clicking on the edges. Look at what's happening. It's too, uh, too small. So I'm just holding down shift, click and drag, holding down shift, click and drag. It's covering that whole piece. I'm good, All right? Now I'm going to, uh, let's say we can name it side and then I can hide it. Go back to the cereal box. We're going to do the same thing. Marquee box selection. Zoom in. Get the selection right here. Right click. Layer via copy. 
hide the old we see the new alt scrolling wheel scroll it back take it put it over here hold down shift scale it up now shift scale it down shift yep double click great got it now we got to do the back select it mark your box selection hold on control select all this so we're just basically cutting it out it's like a coloring book sort of right here be a copy oh look at what i did wrong layer it needs to be on the original layer now i can work hide the old uh the name is back Alt, scroll back. See what I'm saying? We place it here, scale it. Well, I'll scale it to this. I'll scale this to this. And then I'll hold down shift. Shift. Now we're almost there. We just got to do two more, right? This top and the bottom. So. Yeah, this is like clearly the this box right here is made without the right dimensions. You know, this actually looks skewed. So your image does matter. But for this, we're just faking it all anyway. So right click. Lay of your copy. Hide this. Take this right here. This. Now check this out. Now we're doing something a little bit different because these are rotated. So if we want to rotate this, you just have to hold down. Uh, I think it's shift and then, but, but first, before it's shift, you have to make sure that you get the little arrows. You see the little curved arrows, hold down shift, and then we can get increments of 15 degrees. Now we place it where we need to go. Hold down shift, drag it, drag it, double click, done. Hide the old. I don't know what that is. That could be top or bottom. Who knows? You know what? Matter of fact, if we wanted to know, we could just go back here and let's look at this. If I right click and go to face and I click on this top face, I know that this one is the top. And I know that now that if I click on this face or if I click on this, this is the bottom. So now when I go back to Photoshop, I know that that's the top. I just go back to this one now. And you know, the bottom will be red. You're not gonna see the bottom anyway but the bottom will be this red piece. Right click, wave your copy, hide that. We have this, scroll out, perfect. I have this right here, shift. You remember, see the curved arrow, shift. Now we do shift to stretch it. Double click, cool. Now we have all these layers right here but we really just want to highlight the ones that we've made, right? So we just click and we can just slide this down right here, boom. So we just like lit all these up at one time. Um, this is the original, let's take this away because we don't need it. And if we really want to be clean with it, I guess, I mean, it just matters if we've covered up the background, uh, that's the biggest part, but if we wanted to be super clean, we could just click off of this. So we just have all of everything else transparent. So now let's save this out. Let's go to file, save as, and let's go to, where's this thing? Uh, oh, I was in the right area. Ha, <laughs> it was, right? Instead of doing it Photoshop, you wanna go to JPEG, right? And I'll go to serial box UV, and then maybe after it, I'll type in, I don't know, Homer. Showbox UV Homer. So now I know that it's not the UV. I, I know it's Homer, it's JPEG, save. I'll go over here to the maximum file of 12. Okay, cool. Now we're at the finish line, y'all. I'm gonna show you. Let's go back here to uh, my. Now let's add this texture to here, right? So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna right click, go to object mode. 
select my object and let's give it a material. Actually, if I look at this, you can see there's like some construction history on it. Um, well, it's, yeah, it's not that bad. But look, so let's add a material. So let's right click and go to assign new material. And we're gonna click on the word Arnold and we're gonna click on the one that says AI standard surface. We're gonna go right here. Let's name this C R E A L serial box Homer or whatever you wanna name it. It could be a cereal box, cookie box, doesn't matter. And um, we're gonna go to color right here. We're gonna go to this little thing right here, which is called a, a what was it called? Label color, color swatch or whatever, or file chooser. I, I don't even know what you call that to be honest with you. <laughs> I should know, but I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Just know that it leads to this, right? Which clicks on the file. And then we go to this file right here and now what we're going to do is we're going to find that uh, that folder, right? So I'm just going to go over here. Okay. So here's my folder. It's called ABCD because I was doing like some letter stuff, uh, some font stuff. So anyway, um, this is where the, the UV is, right? Remember, this is the one we chopped because it's all in the side right here. And everything makes sense. Um, I click on open. Now it's in there, right? But we don't see it here, right? It's not here. So first we're gonna go over here, go back to my classic, and we're gonna look at this. Now, what I always like to do is press four, because you know four is um wireframe. Four, whoa. Am I crazy? Oh, okay. I was thinking I was in another program, thinking the wrong thing. No, my four wasn't working for a second. So four is wireframe, five is solid, six has the texture. And there you go. We have our cereal box with our Homer crying on it, Homer O's, cinnamon donuts. And we have our, uh, yeah, our cereal box. This is kind of stretched. And then, you know, like I said, this is just something to uh, uh, exercise to get you familiar with UVs. But because it's stretched, it probably wouldn't look bad if we pressed R to scale and scaled it in a bit. But you know, it's like kind of loses the cereal box shape a little bit. So, but you could do something like this after the fact, if like the stretching looks really bad. This right here, thing looks good. So the Kellogg's is looking a little bit more normal. Yeah. And this is how you UV a cereal box, smile.